Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the episode from season one, The Actress. If you're enjoying these videos, please do like and subscribe. So The Actress was written by William Bast and directed by Vincent Sherman. Vincent Sherman had been a director in Hollywood since about the 1940s, had worked numerous times with uh, Joan Crawford, Betty Davis, he was good friends with Errol Flynn. And in later years, I actually became good friends with his son, Eric Sherman. And Eric actually did some mentoring for me when I was first starting to do some writing, some script writing, and then some directing, looking into that. So I have a long history with the Sherman family. Vincent Sherman passed away just shy of his 100th birthday. So uh, he did a number of uh, episodes over the course of the series. So this was an early one of his, the actress. And there's wonderful little touches in this episode from season one that were very sweet and definitely showed his creativity as a director, some of the things that he, little touches that he put in there that made it really come to life and, and gave the audience a real sense of the era, of the family, the dynamics within the family. This episode guest starred Pippa Scott, an actress who had had quite a career in Hollywood. And at the time that she guest starred in The Actress, she was married to our executive producer, Lee Rich. Lee Rich and Merv Adelson were the two founders of Lorimar Productions who produced The Waltons and later went on to produce Eight is Enough and Dallas and Knott's Landing. So they had quite a successful run in producing television series. The Homecoming was one of the very first things they ever produced. So Pippa Scott was married to Lee Rich. Uh, and although perhaps nepotism got her the audition, there's no question that her talent landed her the role because she was just terrific in this role. Playing an actress is a very interesting thing. And she was a very flamboyant and big personality as an actress, very dramatic, had a lot of flair to her. But I loved the dimension of the character because you saw her make all these flips within her choices and her evaluation of the situation. When she first meets John Boy, she dismisses him, but then when he expresses how much he admires her as an actress, you see her turn on the charm and she does indeed charm John Boy. And John Boy was also pretty impressed by that, as she said, custom built Cadillac car. I know a lot of you have asked about the cars at times. And when I did an episode about the vehicles, some of them we couldn't identify what the makes and models were. So I was really hoping that this one <laughs> I could find and they literally say it in the show. So there you go. It is a custom Cadillac. <laughs> in this episode, grandma and mama are not really thrilled with the idea of this actress staying at the house or even being at the house initially. Uh, grandma in particular is um, very disapproving. Olivia is a bit more compassionate about her until she crosses the line and gets drunk in the house. But even still, both grandma and Olivia show their compassion, their humanity, when they realize that she really doesn't have anywhere else to go. And they do indeed want to find a way to help her. It was not uncommon for a long time for actors to be really looked down upon in society. They were not looked up at in the way that we look up and admire and, and revere some of the big celebrities and big stars in today's Hollywood. At times, act, they would say actors and animals are not allowed. <laughs> so that's pretty tough when you are sort of classified with animals. Uh, but I think there was, there was just a stigma for some time about what show people were like and that perhaps that they had loose morals. And once again, this is a character who smokes and 
Alvira is informed that Mama doesn't like Lady smoking in the house. And no, she does not. <laughs> but Alvira took all of the rebukes in good stride. Early in the episode, when Alvira is waiting outside in the truck to find out if she is going to be invited inside the house, a number of the children and Grandpa are all peeking out the window at her. So you see the inside of the house from the living room as they're peeking out. Then it would cut to Alvira sitting in the truck. That would have been shot on the back lot. And then when she looks at the window, she's not seeing, she can look towards the window perhaps, but she's not seeing all those children in the window. So when she sticks her tongue out at them, she would have just been doing that at a particular eye line that she was given by the director. You know, okay, we want your eye line here for camera. So this is just kind of some of the ways that the editing went back and forth all the time in episodes to to get all the pieces that were needed. So they'd shoot part of it and then they go, okay, later on we gotta pick up this piece over here because they're not gonna jump from inside the house, run outside to the back lot, get the shot out there and then run back inside. There's the point when the kids are walking to Godsey's store with Alvira and Jason is carrying Aaron and Ben is carrying Elizabeth. And I don't remember that being something that was done very much of the brothers and sisters. I mean, we carried Elizabeth a lot because she was the youngest, but it was the only time I remember seeing Jason carrying Aaron and Ben carrying Elizabeth all at the same time. So I I was struck by that. And, and from a directing standpoint, thought how clever Vincent Sherman was to put little moments like that in that just so built character. Here we are in Godsey's store and this particular shot that Vincent Sherman crafted looks over the candy section <laughs> and then over to see everyone standing around the phone. That would have been a case where they had stocked all that candy in that candy case for the scenes in Godsey's store. There were a few scenes in Godsey's store in this episode. So they would have all been shot probably on the same day. And the angled section of that, you actually could reach right through that. I don't know if there would normally be glass there, but in this case, there was not. Some of that may have been to avoid reflections off of the glass. So we were really able to just reach right in and snag that candy when no one was looking. In a number of episodes in early seasons, Mary Ellen really struggled with feeling confident about herself and her looks, despite the fact that she was a very confident person, a very confident character. But uh, in The Minstrel, when Jamie draws her picture and and she doesn't think she's pretty, you know, there's, there's times when, in The Homecoming, when she asked uh, Mama, do you think I'm pretty? And Mama said, no, I think you're beautiful. So these moments of insecurity as she went through the growing pains. And in this case, Alvira says, oh, you're really a rather pretty girl. And she's like, oh, I don't feel pretty. I just feel like I'm a mess. And I understand having gone through those phases because I went back and forth a lot during those times. And, and sometimes doing the Waltons made it even more difficult because an episode like this would be done. And, you know, I was having to explore my own personal feelings about myself to understand the character. And then of course she dresses me up in this like, this dress, I, I liked the dress, but I hated all the extra makeup personally. I just thought I, I did look really gaudy and really tacky and I was I was really uncomfortable in that. And, and so it was kind of an embarrassing scene to have to shoot and have everybody looking at me and laughing at me and feeling like, yeah, I do. I would like to look pretty and I don't. <laughs> there was a real tradition in particularly MGM musicals where the concept of my dad's got a barn and we're going to put on a show. A lot of Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland shows were kind of like that. And in this case, there's the scene where they decide that uh, Elvira can put on a show at Godsey's store. So it's a little of that Mr. Godsey's got a space, let's put on a show, you know, which I thought was kind of fun. And then when we get into the actual performance, again, uh, 
the director in me watched some of what what was done here where in the frame where she's first getting ready to perform you see this man cross into a seat so often directors will will do things like that so that it does something interesting in the frame to put something in the foreground affects the overall depth perception of the shot and things like that so then it keeps the frame the shot interesting and active so i that caught my attention in this it also caught my attention that and i expect this was richard thomas that as he starts speaking uh, introducing Alvira, that he stumbles a little bit over a couple of his words. And I believe that was probably a choice of Richard's because John Boy would not have been comfortable in front of an audience in the same way that Alvira was. She performed in front of people all the time. John Boy did not. So for him to get out and be introducing her, you know, he chose to be a little uncomfortable with that and fumble with his words. Actors' choices. When Elvira first comes out, she gives a wonderful explanation of an actor that I'm going to read to you because it really moved me. It is said that actors are very special people. They are born between the acts, cradled in dresser drawers, and nurtured on grease paint. They come alive at 8.30 every night, but only in the presence of an audience. And when they die, they go not to heaven, but to the theater. As someone who started my career on the stage at a very early age, like, you know, I don't know, probably like five, four, doing little recitals, the theater's always meant a lot to me. And from an early age, I knew I wanted to be an actor. I've always admired the creativity of the acting community. I mean, some, some actors are a little weird, some are a little quirky, you know, but we share an inner desire to, to take people on a journey, to create magic. And so having this little tribute to a piece of what can make an actor tick <laughs> just spoke to me. So that's what I have for you here on the episode, The Actress. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope I will see you next time on another Behind the Scenes of the Waltons or a future Ask Judy. So keep putting those questions to me through Facebook here in the comments and stuff like that. There's a lot of them. I don't always get to everything, but I really appreciate all of your interest in, in the Waltons. I'll see you next time.